PT was a playable demo released at Gamescom 2014 by Hideo Kojima, and as you all probably know by now, it turns out to be a playable teaser for the next Silent Hill game to be called Silent Hills. This downloadable quickie on PS4 took the world by storm. Everyone's been talking about it, so what makes it so freaking scary? <laughs> Yes, I'm just gonna come out and say it, this PT thing is really the first game that actually really scared me. Yeah, I played Outlast, yeah, I played Amnesia, oh, you got me, oh, you're a little creepy. But PT is the first thing that actually genuinely chilled me to the bone since at last I can remember. And I'm not the only one, this PT thing has really drummed up excitement for the next Silent Hills game to be worked on by Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. So I'm just trying to look at with you guys what makes this thing so successful and how scary it is. And I think one of the biggest things in it is the less is more horror approach. This subtle horror approach is something that totally reminded me of one of my favorite movies, uh, The Blair Witch Project, in that less is more and you fear more what you don't actually see. It's very clear PT is designed to prey on the fears of what you don't understand. And you always fear what you don't understand. PT makes absolutely no sense. There's no structure, no definition, and I think that's what really gets underneath people's skin, is that you don't know what you're doing. And in this way, it's the most like a Silent Hill game in that it's almost like a dreamscape. It's this dreamlike thing that you're just kind of progressing through, and you can't really explain anything, and weird things are happening, but you're going and you're being scared. PT is very limited in that it's one hallway and like two rooms that you constantly go through, and that eternal loop kind of represents hell. It's just like this eternal trudge through hell where every time you step through the door, you go through the same thing again, but you're terrified because you don't know what's going to be different. That sense of dread that you get when you walk through the door at the end of the hall only to repeat the next hallway once again is what is so effective, and the game does that by making you feel safe and then slowly and subtly pulling the rug out from under you. It's not like the old Silent Hill games where things randomly click on and you go from real world to dark evil world. This is a game where there's no definition. There's You don't really know the rules of the game world. There are no rules at all, so you may walk through a hallway that is brightly lit and clean and beautiful and think it's fine until something scares you. And then you can walk through a dimly lit, swinging, red lantern, evil hallway where nothing scares you. You really don't know what to expect at all, and that's what works so well for PT. Even the ghosts, the ghosts that you see, have no defined set of rules. While you think when the clock strikes, you think that's when they come out, because sometimes they do, and then they get you, they don't always. So there's really no rules, and that really makes you freak out even more. There's also some real taboo shit in there, like crying babies and a fetus in a sink that is crying, which is something I don't think we're used to seeing in a gaming medium, and it was absolutely terrifying and shocking to look down in that sink and see a crying, screaming fetus thing. Absolutely horrifying. All this baby imagery really takes it to the next level, especially with the hanging, swinging fridge, with the baby screaming and the blood, and it just makes you feel so uncomfortable. Never have I heard a baby's blood-curdling scream that really, really freaked me out. I'm actually getting freaked out talking about it right now. Along with all this, and I, like I said, the game totally breaking boundaries and not really defining any rules, the fact that it breaks the fourth wall really gives another sense of unease and leaves you not really knowing what to expect. The radio is the perfect example, just the radio providing the exposition and then the the constant, we're just getting started, stuff like that. When the radio acknowledges you and says, look behind you, that stuff works absolutely perfectly. And I haven't played a game where I've been going, no, 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 I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. That was what I did in PT. And that I was like, wow. That means something. They did something right. All these game design elements, I think what really ties them all together is the fact that the control scheme and the game scheme is so simple. It's a first person game where you just walk around and click on things and you have a slight zoom. There's nothing to be confused of here. There's no controls to distract you. There's no items and inventories, nothing to distract you, nothing to take away from the horror, the dread, and the atmosphere that is on screen. Coupled with the awesome sound design, it really is just a full fear package. Now, the biggest question with this playable teaser is what are they going to do with it? Is this what the next Silent Hills game is going to be like, and I have to say, I really don't think so. Sorry, guys. The fact that this was released without a name and, and not actually attached to Silent Hill mean they could do whatever they want with this little teaser, and they didn't have any marketing or budget or corporations behind them to tell them what to do. And unfortunately, I think the final game might have a little bit more of that. This game isn't really marketable for a studio. This type of thing, while very cool and very effective and people love it, may not necessarily be marketable for a big studio like Konami. And honestly, that breaks my goddamn heart, but I do have a lot of faith for this, considering that Hideo Kojima is involved. Also, 
being reined back a little bit by Guillermo del Toro, who is known for his incredible storytelling and beautiful monster designs. You know, Pan's Labyrinth, Pacific Rim, Hellboy, awesome stuff. So I still think Silent Hills is something definitely to look forward to, and especially if it's graphically anything like this demo, which apparently was toned down a little bit to make it scary. It looked incredibly real and incredibly convincing, and I'm really looking forward to what the next Silent Hills game looks like, plays like, and feels like. So guys, PT is definitely the biggest thing in games right now, so we definitely need to talk about it. Let me know in the comments what was the scariest thing of PT for you. And if you didn't play it, let me know if you watched it over a live stream or a YouTube Let's Play video because that's interesting and I think that still translates to horror pretty well, especially if you don't watch it with some idiot guy screaming with a face cam, like me for example. But thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to give it a like and show people that horror games are awesome and people love horror games and give all the horror game videos likes like this one. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already because we're giving away free games, we're doing top tens, we're doing all kinds of fun stuff. So subscribe to Game Ranks and I'm Jake Baldino and I'll see you guys next time.